We're here. Welcome, welcome, What's welcome. What's going on? What's welcome. going on? We're welcome. back. We missed you last week. Um, duty call to be elsewhere honoring a a dear friend, but we are back live. Um, yes. So welcome to another edition to the What's Working Now Mastermind with Willie and Daria. We are so happy you're here with us. Thank you for taking the time. You could have spent your time doing something else, but you decided to spend your some of your with time us. with us. And we know that time is very important. So yes. We really and we're not going to keep you long. It. We'll be here for 30 minutes flat. And uh, we got to get on and do things just like you do. Yes. So yes, here we yes. go. So um, this episode, we are talking about network marketing. And um, people have a lot of um, misconceptions about it. So I think we're going to clear some things up. on From the ground up. Yeah, telling you from the very beginning. But before we start, just want to share with you a little bit of our story when it came to network marketing. We started um, about five years ago. For me, it was like going down uh, memory lane. And um, I just had a different attitude this time. I was doing network marketing back in the 80s with a very good friend of mine. And it was just certain things that we just were not willing to do because we figured, hey, we can make money on selling the products and you know, we'll be good. Um, we weren't really um, too versed on doing prospecting and all the other skills that we're going to talk about that makes it so important. But here we are, a story uh, fast forwarding ahead. Five years ago, Willie and I decided that we were going to embark on this journey and take the time to actually learn the skills that we wanted to learn because we were just tired of the mundane, you know, working from paycheck to paycheck, limited ceilings, just looking good on the outside and being empty on the inside. Right. You know, you know the drill. Right. Dealing with administration that look at you as a number, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we just wanted freedom and just have more time to do the things that we enjoy, we like to do, spend time with our family and not money and, and having money where it's not an option. We, and, no, and, where money is I mean, not an issue. An issue. That's <laughs> what I mean. Money. <laughs> yeah. Money is not an issue and we can just do the things that we want to do because we want to. Because so, money is always an option. Yes. Always yes, yes, an yes. option. So, um, so we come to you today talking about how you can become a professional because this profession is a prof it, this network marketing thing, as people say it is, it's a profession. Yeah. Get away from people telling you that this is not a real job because it's not. You're right. They're right in that respect. That it's not a real job. It's a profession. It's a career. It's a choice. It's something you do with intentionality. Um, get away from people who talk to you about it being a pyramid. It is not a pyramid. Pyramid are officially in any shape, form, or fashion illegal in the United States. What a pyramid is, so that you understand, is a pyramid is whereby I'm talking to you about a concept. And I ask you to give me money without an exchange of anything. I mean literally anything right. but the concept. It's like getting paid for intellectual property that is not even yours. Because hmm. at least with intellectual property, I'm giving you a documented idea of something that I know that has worked even on a small scale. And it'll be up to you to purchase my idea and take it to the next level. But a pyramid doesn't even work that way. I'm asking you to invest in a box or a sheem or a plot or something. And when you come back again to collect, you got to make sure you bring one, two, three, four, five people with you. Mm -mm. Does that sound about right? Okay, that's not that's, what we're doing. That's not what we're That's about. not what multi-level marketing is all about. Yes, you actually bring in people to leverage the idea of duplication. But everybody is going to have the idea. They're going to have the concept. They're going to have the training. They're going to have the module. They're going to have access to resources to help them grow their business. They're going to have product or service. And you're going to get that on day one. And it's up to you 
to market those things uh, efficiently and effectively based on your knowledge. And that's the key. That's the downfall of the industry is that people get in like the flash in the pants and thinking that you're gonna make money overnight. No, it's a process. You gotta develop, you have to strengthen, you gotta be willing to part ways with a whole lot of ignorant people who mm. cannot see you for where you're going, but only wanna hold you and judge you for where you've been. It's mm -hmm. deep. Yeah, it's you know, deep. network marketing is just like any other business. If you decided you wanna buy McDonald's, you know, it takes time for and capital, be, you know, to be in profit. Big up front. Yeah. Okay. It's going to take time. Without because, further ado, let's, you know, let's, let's get into this so thing. Much you, you, you know, you have to, to do. So just know that you have to give it time. So as my partner says, without further ado, let's get it crack a lack. And I'm going to share my screen. So give me a moment. All right. All right, looks like we're there. Just about. Let's get that going. Oh, not that one. Here we are. All right, so we're gonna start from here. All right. So here we go. William Darius Mastermind. What's working now? How to become a network marketing professional? Introduction. All right. All right, traditional wealth options versus network marketing. Okay, the network marketing career option is not for everyone. If you believe investing upwards to $100,000 for an education to receive a master's degree in any field of study, then take your God-given talents along with your education to a company for salary and fringe benefits for the next 40 years or so, this conversation and training is not for you. Don't get us wrong, we respect your choice. We really do. But this is not what we're talking about. All right. So if you're like us and you've spent 20 years working in the industry of your choice or profession, and it's a profession that you love and have seen and experienced decline in purpose, imagination, relevance, and effectiveness. Still, finding yourself devoted to the vision you had when you just got in, but you're boggled down furthermore by administration working against you and the very people that is in need of this service. If you're still lacking the money you worked so hard for, and now you're living from paycheck to paycheck, that was not part of the original deal. And this is what we experienced. This is the driving force for us. This is sort of our why, because with six figures between the two of us, we have our own home, we got one car, and we're still living paycheck to paycheck. And look, let me stop you before you go there. No, it's not money mismanagement. I don't care how well you manage your money, when you walk out there and you're buying gas, yeah, gas is 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 now low, but you've seen it creep up and creeping just up. and just what four years ago we were almost averaging about four dollars a gallon. That wasn't so long ago, okay? Uh, if you take public transportation, the fare has gone up. Hmm. To buy a car, the a Toyota Corolla used to cost under ten thousand dollars. Now it's almost twenty. The average car is about twenty thousand dollars. Okay. And we're not talking about so companies are scaling upwards. They're not scaling down. Even a little bitty smart car that just came out on the market, and because of its size and 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 and, and appeal to city dwellers like New Yorkers and where parking is is tough, you you spend almost twelve thousand dollars for that little bitty car. Yeah, I mean that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. it, I mean it really is. So so I mean. Just the car. Oh, don't no get me amenities. started. No don't amenities. get me started. Don't That's don't get thing. me started. Now, if you want so, some some I'm conveniences, sorry. then then it's going to cost you more. And listen, I'm not mad at anybody, but one of the things that we've learned along the way is you need to recognize what you can't afford. And while we're not going to dwell on the material things that we can't afford. We are going to focus on the fact that we 
cannot afford, and perhaps you cannot afford to be in a situation where you've worked 40 years and you're about to retire and you're on a fixed income and you got to watch your pennies harder than you were when you were, when you were working. working. Mm -hmm. So here's the shift. Hang on, we are coming to your, re your rescue. We're about to re receive, re ah, we're about to reveal, <laughs> excuse me, a proven formula designed to propel you into the direction of change, power, and most of all, freedom. freedom. Yes, move yourself from under a boss, move yourself from under a time clock or a sign in sheet. Move yourself away from regulation and constant change that neither you are imp given input into and bottom line that don't work. You want to be in a place where you call the shops, shots, spend time with your family and friends, spend money without robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's what we're talking about. Doesn't that sound good? All right, so this is what we've what we've had, right? Right? All them many things, but we also recognize them as blue collar, white collar, traditional business ownership, and investment. These are your traditional uh, wealth uh, tools, if you will, or or venues. Okay, I remember I'm a '60s child, so I remember. In high school, you, 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 you got your high school diploma and you can choose to either go to college or take a job, right? Because there was a lot of opportunities to use your physical talents to do work, you know, such as delivering mail, uh, being a page, uh, uh, learning a trade and so on and so forth. You know, fixing something, servicing something. That was still rampant in my time. In what, I graduated in 1979. White collar, that was a little more pristine. You worked in a cubicle, or if you're fortunate enough, you're in an office, you're making decisions, you have people under you, uh, uh, you're, you're managing money, you know, you, you, you kind of have a, a, a intellectual property going on, but nobody's paying you for your ideas per se, but nevertheless, you have some control. You have some control. You, you're exactly. moving and shaking certain things. You're mm -hmm. an asset to the company, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then you have traditional business ownership. You know, mm -hmm. your mom and pops are well, one thing that was available that's kind of gone by the wayside today. Um, you have your franchises, which are still thriving. Um, however, they require tremendous startup cost. In fact, I don't think there's a, there's a franchise that you can start out, that you can start with that is under um, $100,000 to get started. Yeah, the and that's just, to, that's just to buy in, okay? The average is about 68000 Start, of course. So you go. So sixty-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. So you average it out depending on your locale. If you're living in New York, I know it ain't sixty-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. I know that it's more like the hundred thousand because of the the marquee of the brand names that are here in in this town and 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 so on and so forth. And then you have investment. Well, yeah, investment. That's Wall Street. That's philanthropy. The bottom line is you don't get into the gate until you start off with at least a million dollars. That's discretionary money that you can actually invest. Mm. Minimum a million dollars. Minimum. Not not six hundred thousand. Not no. Minimum, because those are the movers and shakers of the marketplace. And the majority of us who are working nine to five or eight to three or eleven to seven or or midnight to sunrise, whatever the situation is, we don't come out that way. Mm. Okay. We're sort of middle ground there. Well, we want to do, uh, aspire to have that traditional business if you have that mindset. But moving right along, let, let's, let's, let's dig deep or go in and dwell into the area of expertise. So in our niche, network marketing, there are three categories of people, okay? And before I go into it, here's a quote from Eric Worre. It says, in order for you to do this business, you must accept a temporary loss of social esteem 
from ignorant people. Hmm. Yeah, people are always going to be talking about you. The house you bought, the clothes you wear, the car you drive, the wife you have, the kids or no kids you have, uh, the way you speak or don't speak, all of that stuff. You doing that thing. Yeah, yeah. But it intensifies more when you get into this business. Because as Eric Worre will say, people will either reward you for the past that you lived, they will reward you or penalize you for the past life that you live in their experience. So if they don't recognize you as a business person, they always see you as a teacher next door or the mailman or the mechanic. You know, when you shift gears on them, they still want to hold you back where you were. And primarily that's because of their own fear and apprehension. You've, you, look, you've gotten out of the gate before they did. So what they're saying is like, well, what can you show me? Just last week you was doing this. Just last week you was doing that. So that's what it is. So mm -hmm. within that spirit, once people get, once they identify the stuff that they want to present, uh, they become either posers, amateurs, or professionals. What's a poser? They treat the profession like a lottery ticket, or right. better word, yet yeah, a hobby. Right. And you know how hobbies well, are. Let's see how this works out. Yeah, um, and you, you know, know I can do it sometime, and let well, me go and do this, and you wind up spending a lot of money doing that thing. Or amateurs, they hope to get lucky. So what they do is they put themselves all over the place, hoping that some unknown soul will buy into what they're offering. Or maybe I'll just sponsor that one person that's going to build my entire downline. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah. That lucky person. Ugh. And then you have <laughs> your professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to talk about today. That's where we're at. And that's what... Eric Worre and so many who are like him are, you know, that upper echelon. No, they're not the 1% of our industry. No, no. The 1% of our industry are doing tremendous work, but there's a whole slew of people out there who are doing awesome work, changing lives just as well. And the bottom line is you don't know them. And chances are you never will know them, but that doesn't separate them or their success from you. And that's where the training comes in. The professional is a person who is an expert at the skills required to build a large and successful network organization. And the key element to making that happen is what is known as duplication. You have to follow your system, master your system so well that when you talk to people, you can help them understand that they too can duplicate the process. So what does that mean? You got to make it simple. Exactly. This is our last slide. So, so this um, will be a good time, I think, to um, outline the, the list of skills we're going to go over within the, the series. Yeah. So hey, the, here we go. Right. I got to pull over my uh, notes here. So, all right. So, I'm going to, while Willie is pulling up his notes, I'm going to share with you um, what you'll be learning within the, the next seven weeks. And these are the skills that you need to um, hone in on and really learn and master in order for you to be a professional in this profession. So you're gonna, you're gonna learn how to find prospects, extremely important. You're going to learn how to invite them to your product or your opportunity. Present your product, follow up with your prospects, help them become customers or distributors, help them to get started correctly, extremely important. And grow your team, by promoting events and so much more. Wow, um, that 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 um, that's uh, that's it in a nutshell, really. I, I thought I had some notes, and I really didn't take down any notes. But um, I want to urge you um, to really lock in um, because uh, this business is really, really, really about mindset. It's really about you really believing in what you're doing. 
you believe in the company you're branding yourself with. You're not branding the company per se, but you are branding you. Because ultimately, you know, I always use this analogy about the car dealership. Whatever car you are driving right now, there are different dealerships that offer the same exact car and model. But you went to one particular dealership because either you were referred to um, them or you saw something about them that really, really got you excited. They made you feel like a person through the buying process. The salesperson made you feel comfortable. He let you drive the car or the truck like it was your own and just sat back there and let you enjoy it all as opposed to telling you six million thousand things about it that you will probably forget the minute you take the key out of the ignition. All of those things are important. So, you know, you may drive a Toyota Celica or a, um, what do you call it, um, a, a Forerunner. But what you will remember most about that vehicle is the person or persons who actually help in the transaction, the transaction of you making that purchase. That is so true. Because we just bought a vehicle um, not too long ago, back in November. Yeah. And we have the, that exact same feeling. You know, whenever we go back to the dealership to get the car maintenance, you know, we look for that individual. Yeah. And, you know, we, it just reminds us of, of that experience we had with him. Yeah. And, 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 and again, so, right. you know, yeah. they, they oh, make man. you feel like you, you, you coming in there to buy the car all over again. All right. You know, right. and so um, that's, so that's a right. great feeling. Because mm -hmm. after all, whether you're investing 16, 18, 24, 50, 70 thousand dollars for that vehicle on going through monthly payments and financing, you know, uh, it's nice to have an experience that make you not think about that. And whenever you do, you do it with a smile on your face. That, that's important. That is really, really important. And our industry is no different because even though we have all this technology today, you know, dealing with people is still essential to the business. And in order for you to deal with people effectively, you have to learn new things about people new things about your company, new things about yourself, and new ways to communicate to people and get them to see, get them in front of your business or opportunity. Those are critical elements. And like I always say to each of our team members, what's important is what you believe. Your customer or your prospect has their own beliefs. And your job is to get them to understand why you believe in what you're doing. That's how you shake their doubts. That's how you give them confidence. That's how you bring them to the buying table. It's not about your company. They don't know your company. They will never know your company but they will know you and they will associate that product with you. Because mm -hmm. when somebody asks them, what is that? Or where did you get it? Your name is going to come up because they're having so much fun with it. They don't have the opportunity. They're not going to be able to explain it, but they will be able to call your name. And you'll get that phone call saying, hey, I'm Joe Smith. I just spoke to Lisa. And she said that you're the, you're the one responsible for her driving that fancy car or you helping her lose 50 pounds or, or, or you exposing her to this, 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 this so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. You know the experience already. So why not capitalize, it, capitalize on it for yourself? Right. Great point. Love it. Okay, so this brings us to the end of our mastermind. What we ask is that you would meet us over at Willie and Darius Unstoppable Entrepreneur Group. If you got value from this mastermind, uh, leave a comment in the group. And if you want to chat with us further, we'll chat there. So until then, we will see you next week. 
at four o'clock and we will go over finding prospects. Yeah, Skill which I'm sure will be a hotbed pro uh, prospect for, for, for many of you. Yes. And um, we're going we're gonna to grind into it, give you 30 minutes of content and just how to do that. So um, see you next week. And you want to hit us on Facebook, um, our HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www Facebook. Yes, Willie and Daria. Um, what is it? William, Facebook dot com forward slash Willie and Daria. That is our fan page. I had to think about it. I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you can meet us over there and also chat with us there as well. If you have any questions, we're here to help. It's all about um, inspiring and coaching and just being there as a support for each other. Each other, yes. All right, so have a right. wonderful day and we Enjoy. will see you next Great week. Great week. Ciao.